But well, anyway, uh, 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 let's talk about um, you know the BRICS situation. You were talking about you were telling me about Africa and Russia and their whole situation. So what I've seen is, and what I understand is Africa, most of Africa, and I think most of Africa has tied into the BRIC situation. Okay, okay. But the main thing is Africa is receiving military support from Russia. From Russia, wow. So it's it's not all of Africa, but it's a lot of countries, a lot of prevalent countries in Africa, um, inclu including Egypt, which is funny, it's like including Egypt, the uh, uh, Libya, uh. you know, because, you know, and that's kind of interesting because, you know, they always claim those areas to be white. You know, yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. But uh, not to get, you know, too far into that. But, um, yeah, man, it's 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 looking a little, it's looking a little shaky now for America right now in the West, because right now, I think the East, I think the I think the West right now is like on pretty much shaking up, and uh, yeah, man, I mean it's just. It's just looking, it's looking just, bad. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, people starting to form alliances and, you know, I mean, it's, it's definitely, I feel like it's going to head into something bigger, man. I hope it don't turn out to nothing too disastrous, but, you know, um, I can't even be mad at them. You know what I mean? A lot of, a lot of um, countries won't support uh, Africa. And so, you know, Russia trying to step in like, yeah, you know, we got your back, Jack. Yep. You know what I mean? So, uh I can't even be mad at them, you know what I mean? Because uh, a lot of African countries don't want to play ball the way other countries play. You know, they don't want to have these other countries with their foot on their necks, you know what Well, I mean? that's what, that's another thing, too. A lot of those countries are, like, tired of, like, the aid, you know, trying to get, you know, they're, they're extracting the resources. Yeah. Like, you're, you know, they're extracting the resources and... Now, like they get, they just to a point where, like, hey, we we just ain't gonna take no more of it. You do what yeah. you gotta do. That's and, it. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's looking crazy because I will tell you one thing, Russia ain't really so much a nail in the coffin. If China gets a part of this, it's a wrap. Yes, sir. Yes, it's sir. It's a wrap. Yeah, man. So we gonna see, man. That's a yeah. delicate situation, man. I'm uh, gonna definitely try to stay abreast of that situation because yeah, uh, right, ain't no telling yeah. where we could end up with that. Yeah. Better not start brushing up on your Mandarin and then you rush. Right. <laughs> y'all better keep up, uh, keep aware, man, because y'all a lot of us, especially these young kids, got their head in the clouds and they ain't really paying attention to what's going on around the world. So y'all better start paying attention because uh, it might get hectic. You know what I mean? So, but anyway, um, but yeah, y'all let us know in the comments what y'all think about that. You know, once again, please don't forget, hit the buttons, like, like share, subscribe, subscribe, like, share, subscribe, like, like share, share, subscribe. <coughs> Brothers and sisters. Yes, sir. We need your support. We need those funds. You know what I mean? Allocate. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, one day we're going to have Dr. Umar on the show. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> we're going to have him on the show. And he's going to be like, brother, you cannot be too over here up there using my words and saying <laughs> things like that and yeah. trying to make me look bad. You understand <laughs> me? You, are, you, sir, are Emerson. You, sir, are Emerson. Let me say it one more time. You, sir, are Emerson. Damn, man. All right, right, right. Calm down. We're sorry, man. We're sorry. We're sorry, man. So, um... All right, well, let's jump into another topic here. Uh, we wanted to talk a little about a little bit about Irv Gotti. He was on uh, Drink Champs recently, and um, he talked about Jay Z and Dame, and you know, talked about Jay not really, uh, you know, needing Dame Dash. You know what I mean? Um, you know, what did you think about that whole situation? Uh, I didn't see the interview. I, I was listening to some people that was kind of commenting on it. Um, you know what I'm saying? That after they watch or, you know, they heard a sound bite, to be honest with you. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's like, uh, to me, me personally, I don't think that's 
accurate. You know what I'm saying? I don't, you know what I'm saying? I can't really say, because, you know what I'm saying, Herb Gotti, you know, you know, respect, like he, he's in those circles. Yeah. So he yeah. might, he might, in a certain way, the way he see it, um, and this is not doing, you know, because I know that Herb and Dame, they kind of got, they kind of got beef with each other right now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I know, like, you know, but just, you know, beef. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the way Irv could see it is, like, yeah, Jay really didn't need your help. But but a lot of people see it the other way around because, you know, the record labels, a lot of them were turning down Jay. Yeah, You know, yeah. they turned down Jay. But yeah. it's because of what uh, Dame did to right. get that off and, you know, up and running, you know, yeah. and then they, you know, people, the powers that be, you know, came through, got in Jay Z's head, like, yeah, you know, get away from, um, you know, get away from name and this, and you can make this, and you know what I'm saying, and that's, I mean, the rest is history. But yeah. I don't think, yeah, I, I, I think it'd be absent to say that, like, oh, Jay didn't need Dame. I don't think that's I don't think that's how that works. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I did watch the interview. I watched it this morning after me and you talked on the phone and um, you know, it was like two hours and two two plus hours, but basically, um they were talking about the battle between um Nas and Jay Z. That's mm -hmm. how it came up. And so, you know, Nori was asking him, he was like, Yo, so were you there? when Jay, you know, wrote Takeover and all of that and how, how it all went down. And and so Irv was like, well, no, nah, I wasn't really there when he did Takeover, but he was there for the super ugly part of it. He was like, yeah, because um, Jay was always in my offices, like, every day, you know. And so um, he said, you know, he, he said that Jay uh, was kind of looked like he was, you know, kind of uptight a little bit. So he finally asked him, like, you know, you all right, you know, is it getting to you, you know, the ether situation? And he said, Jay was like, yeah, it's getting to me. You know what I mean? And so he said that uh, he told Jay, he was like, yo, you've been telling me that if worse come to worse, you was going to air out his baby moms. You know what I mean? So why don't you just address that? And so that's, he said uh, he threw on the super ugly beat. So Irv was actually the one that gave him the beat. Yeah. Uh, and um, Jay, you know, went in and then, Basically, because they were talking about that, Nori was like, so where was Dame during this time? And um, Irv was like, Dame wasn't around. He said, uh, Jay was always by himself. And, you know, he didn't really need Dame. Mm. You know, and so he was like, you know, Jay was just always doing Jay. And so he never really needed Dame like that. And so that's how that came about. And so, uh, yeah. You know, he, I mean, you know, Irv did admit, he was like, yeah, you know, the Super Ugly didn't really hit as hard as Jay wanted it to. You know, and it was what it was. But um, I, in my opinion, I don't necessarily think he didn't need Dame at all. But I think that the longer that Rockefeller went on, the less and less he needed Dame. Yeah. Because Jay's the kind of guy, he's business minded. So he was probably soaking up a lot of shit. Like, you know, once I learn all this shit, yeah, eventually I'm not going to need you. And then next thing you know, Rockefeller breaks up. And by then, Jay had already soaked up enough. I mean, look what he was able to do. He was able to become the CEO of Def Jam. You know what yeah. I mean? You know, without lot, having any experience. A lot <laughs> of people were pissed off about that. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people were mad because, about like, that. Particularly the legacy acts. The yeah, whole, yeah. You know, Cool J, uh, Red Man. You know what I'm saying? They kind of... You know, that's I think that's what LL Cool J was alluding to. Just because you, you know, just because you can cook a cake, doesn't mean that you're a chef. Right, and right. That's what he was alluding to. Yeah. So you know, I mean, but Jay, you know, he still did the thing. You know, he he held it for a couple of years and then he uh, moved on. You know, I think Jay just wanted that as a notch under his belt. You know what I mean? And so I think it has helped him a lot. You know, he he probably learned a lot as he was even doing the job because I mean. You know, he's a smart guy, you know what I mean? So I think that he probably needed Dame less and less, but I don't think it was to the point where he didn't need him at all. Oh, yeah. So, yeah.
that's how I uh, look at it to me anyway. But um, that's my personal opinion. Of course, y'all let us know what y'all think in the comments because, uh, you know, I mean, if you look at where they're at, you know, Jay is very successful, business mogul. Dame is still doing his thing. I give him that, but you yeah. know, he still ain't got the height that Jay Z has. Oh no! Nah. So you know, it is what it is. So obviously, Jay didn't need him for so much. You know what I mean? He probably did help Jay open some doors, but once Jay's that kind of guy, once he learns some shit, he don't need to keep asking you, "What do I do now?" You know what I mean? He not that type. Nah, he gonna do. I mean, cause that's the thing. Cause that's just an anything. Now that I've, you know, what I'm saying. If now if I come to you, couple you know couple other times you know a couple of times just to make sure I get make yeah. sure I'm doing things right, yeah that's one thing. But after that, like oh, shit, I could do it myself. Right. So I get right. I get that scenario. So yeah, by that time, yeah, I wouldn't need you know my mentor or whoever brought me in as much. So I understand that you know. Yeah, but it was a good interview. I did watch the whole thing, you know, because, uh, I mean, I thought it was weird because uh, Herb was just on there last year, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when he was talking about the whole Ashanti situation, uh -huh. which, you know, of course, that came up as well. He was talking about, um, uh, Nori said, you know, it w what would be dope is if they did like a, you know, how Wu-Tang and Nas did their tour. You yeah. Know, speaking of, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, he said, and they still do? tour. Right. He said, what would be dope? Nori was like, what if y'all did like um, Murder, Inc. And, and Rockefeller. Uh, um, yeah, Murder, Inc. and Rockefeller or even Murder, Inc. and Rough Riders. He was like, you know, if you put any of those two groups together. Oh, man, they would sell. Would kill man. that. You know yeah, what I mean? Because there's a re <clears throat> resurgence of the, I mean, the fact that 50 kind of jumped up and did this, you know, with Buster Rhymes. Um, yeah, the, there's not only a resurgence of the 80s and 90s, but the resurgence of the early 2000s as well. Yep. So, yep. yeah, them doing that, that would, be, that would be great. Yeah, man, I think that would be dope, man, if they did any one of those. Because uh, they talked heavily about uh, Rockefeller. They talked heavily about Rough Riders and all of that, man. So, yeah, so, I mean, it, it would really, I think it would be good. But um, he said that he don't, Irv said he don't think it can happen because... He don't think Ashanti would want to do it, you know, because of her issue with him, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, you know, which, you know, it's kind of hard, but, you know, she was a major part of their uh, their camp. You know, she was one of the biggest artists, her and Ja. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if she don't do it, yeah, that's going to be kind of Dang, that's how the, dang, she done murdered, she done did most of the murder and on the murder. Right, age. right. And she's a singing bitch. <laughs> Not to call you a bitch or something. Right, you, right. You we know, just talking you, that street. We just talking, yeah, that's all they did. So, uh, but yeah, the queen. so, you know. <laughs> queen. Queen, you know what I mean? But yeah, man, I, I think that would be dope if they were able to get some kind of reunion tour like that together. Yeah, I mean, it just, I mean, honestly, like I said, with the reassurgence, of the you know the two thousand rap right. I mean, like I said, fifty you know kind of proved it. He's yeah. been kind of successful in it. I think it just needs to be, yeah, it needs to be done because they're gonna they're definitely gonna look back and be like, damn man, we kind of missed out on that. Yeah, most definitely. And I mean, you know, and they were talking about how you know Nori said he went to the Wu Tang Nas tour, one of their concerts, and he was like, yeah, they mean. They giving you all the classics. They don't even have to do new show, new songs. Nah. So it's like you know, you get a group like you know Murder Inc. out there. And all they gotta do is do it all their old classics. You know what I mean? So you know that they did well. The one we seen it, they well Nas did a couple of new things. Yeah, they did. He did a couple of new songs, but yeah, yeah. but he didn't have to if he didn't. Nah, nah, it. nah. You know what shoot. I mean? He was just putting it out shit. there, but you know he could have done nothing but classics. You know Shoot, I mean? all Nas gotta do, and I know he gets annoyed by that. Just go in that Illmatic and it was written. Right, right exactly. Get a little bit of that I am joint, do that yeah. Nas is like. Yeah, man. God, man, that Nas is like is special, man. That shit. Yep. Yes, sir. Yeah, man, Nas got way too many hits, man. I mean, one song that I, I wish he would have done uh, during our show would have been uh, my joint on the reel. It's an old joint that he did with like Cormega and uh, yeah. a bunch of other rappers. Uh, but yeah, it was, man, that joint was fire. I don't know if it ever made one of the albums. I think it might have uh, got.
got on the one of the um, lost tapes. Lost tapes, yeah. But I don't think it made one of the official albums. Yeah. But um, but yeah, that was my joint right there. So yeah, man. Uh, shout out to Nas and Wu. I mean, it would be dope. I think a lot of people would still pay for those tickets if Murder Inc. got together with another group like uh, the old Rockefeller or the old Rough Riders. You know, you get the locks in there. I mean, come on, man. Drag on. I think they don't want the locks and that because shit, they already seen what they did. Right, didn't right. Say. <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. Exactly. Now that they're going to be challenging exactly. and battling each other on the road, but Yo, yeah, they don't. let the niggas go last. Yeah. Let the niggas go first and then y'all come in with the murder ink shit after that. So everybody. Nah, will they would probably have to go first. Yeah. Because now nah, they go after, if they go after them, what the fuck they going to do? I'm just saying, you know, normally whoever go last, that's who the audience remember the most a lot of times, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so, but then they go, but, but then they go, go, they go first. They but then they go first. Right, the audience ain't going to want to forget about that. They, you, you can't put the locks on, put that hard street shit on, and then come back with a shot. You know what no, I mean? You can't. You're right, it might not work. They might have to sandwich them in, like, start off with Murder 8. Give us a little bit of the locks and then come back with Murder 8. <laughs> you, you. you know what I mean? Some shit like that, you know. Shit. That, that might work. That might work. Jenny, come on there. Tech, let's make something happen. <laughs> let's make something happen. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's Yo, it. Yo, it would be a rap, boy. That's it. Yo, um, recently 50 bought uh, Jada out on stage with him. You know what I mean? They did some joints together. Oh, that's what I so, saw. Yeah, that was dope. And then uh, I also saw a clip where um, KRS uh, had bought MC Shan out, and they did some you yeah, know, they did their classics. Yeah, yeah. I think he let Shan do the bridge. Oh, and, and speaking he, of uh, which, yeah. speaking of which, Shan actually, Nas and Shan actually, you were know, seen together. You know, I know this was about a couple of weeks ago, but uh, yeah, Nas mm-hmm. came out and you know yeah. showed the um, you know did the vid. You know, they had like a little video with Shan. Yeah, I, yeah. I think yeah. We mentioned that last week that they yeah. uh, squashed their little beef. Wasn't a beef, but you know, yeah. Shan, Shan, you know, squashed his issue. I don't think Nas ever had an issue. Nah, man. Because, so, uh, yeah. like, my thing of it is, is this, man. It's like, you should be, like, like I said, when it comes to MC Shan and Melly Mel, y'all can't be bitter, man. Like, right. these are your kids. They growing up. You want to see your kids make it. I mean, that's the way I look at it. You know Yeah, you know. If y'all want to, if y'all want to, uh, uh, battle, you know, y'all battle each other. MC Shan and Melly Mel. Let's see what happened with that. <laughs> That'd be, the ball, the ball, the That'd be interesting. That'd be interesting. That'd be interesting. You know what I mean? Bring all the rock. All you uh-huh. want. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. You know? All, y'all can do all the old school shit. Yeah, man. But uh, I don't think Chan did too much of the old school, you know, sounds like that. You know, he didn't do too much of no, that. No, I mean, because he, he was kind of like in that same vein with like, I mean, he wasn't, like people remember the Karras and, uh, you know, Big Daddy Kane, Rakim. Yeah. I mean, he was kind of in that vein, but not, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't as prominent. A lot of the reason is because of his voice. Yeah. Because he had the higher pitched voice as opposed to them. They had the more lower, you know what I'm saying? Low bass, low, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I mean, shit, Kane come on the mic. What the fuck you going to do? Really? Exactly. Shit. Exactly. So yeah, man. Like, so, like God on the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It'll be a rap, man. But uh, but yeah, man. So you know, that that's an interesting joint, man, right there, man. So uh, but yeah, the whole you know Jay Z and and Dave thing, you know what I mean. Y'all let us know what y'all think about that in the comments.